When we're able to do coronary artery bypass grafting as an elective procedure, which by far is our preference and also the most common means by which this is recommended, generally speaking, like with any operation, you won't be allowed to eat the night before surgery. There's good reason for this. This is true of most major operations and has to do with wanting your stomach to be empty so the anesthesiologist can safely perform anesthesia. We'll likely ask you to take a very specialized shower the night before and perhaps even the morning of surgery. Of course, we'll use very specialized antibiotics to help in the prevention of any kind of surgical infection, but quite frankly, there's no substitute for the physical act of cleansing the skin. Most patients will come to the hospital very early in the morning on the day of surgery. We tend to start somewhat early, and it's not infrequent that we'll ask patients to come to the hospital at 5 to 5.30. You go to a, a pre-holding area where you will meet a very specialized group of nurses and the anesthesiologist. All of the questions can be answered if they haven't already been at that time. Your family will be able to be with you until it's time to go to the operating room. Most patients do remember leaving the holding area and going to the operating room, but this may well be the last thing that's recollected as anesthesia will soon be taking effect. At this point, I do want to make a small note to the families that the day can be much more difficult on them than it actually is on the patient because the patient is asleep for most of the day of surgery and often won't have any retrospective recollection of what's gone on for that day. After the operation, our patients go to the intensive care unit, which serves as the recovery room where they'll meet a very specialized group of nurses that are highly trained in the specific care of the post-operative cardiac surgical patient. There are several tubes and several catheters that are in place after a heart surgery operation. Most, if not all, of these tubes, catheters, intravenouses, et cetera, will be removed as early as possible so that there's no unnecessary discomfort for the patient. Of course, our primary objective after the operation is to keep the patient as comfortable as possible while still maintaining a very high level of safety to assure that the outcome is an excellent one. Approximately 30 minutes after the operation is over and the patient is in the intensive care unit, the family will be allowed to visit with the patient. Now, the patient's asleep. Most of our patients, we keep sedated for approximately four hours after the operation just to keep them as comfortable as we possibly can prior to taking out the breathing tube. But it is perfectly acceptable for the patient's family to come in, hold hands, talk to the patient, and ask any questions that they'd like, either of the doctors or the nurses that are always at the patient's bedside. Most patients remain in the intensive care unit for approximately 24 hours until we feel that they're perfectly stable enough to be transferred to our surveillance unit. On occasion, patients will stay an extra day. It is not a sign that something is wrong if you remain in the intensive care unit for any extra period of time. From the intensive care unit, the patient is generally transferred to our surveillance care unit. While in the CSU, it's very important that you be frequently getting out of bed, ambulating, taking deep breaths, coughing, and doing breathing exercises, working with physical therapy. It's important that I point out that our objective is to return you to your normal quality of life. Frequently, this can be a goal that seems impossible to achieve, particularly when you're in the first or second week or the early stages of your recuperation. There is life after heart surgery, and there is a high quality of life after heart surgery, and in fact our objective is to give you the best possible quality of life, period.